This is uh, kind of an impromptu video, but we're over here at Titan's place and we're going to be uh, installing a oil pressure gauge. This is a Phantom from Autometer. It's a digital gauge. We got the little midget helping out today. And what we're doing is rather than putting in a sandwich plate, we're going to remove the oil filter housing, which is that thing there. I've already gone ahead and taken the filter off and drained some of the oil out. Now you don't need to drain the pan to do this, you just need to uh, let the oil fall out because it's going to bleed out of the turbo. Then you use a 12 mil and you rip these out. Okay, there's four of them. And you unplug the connector for the uh, oil pressure switch, which is right here. And then up here, and you got a 14 mil banjo bolt, and that's your turbo oil feed line. And uh, once I get this out, we're going to continue on to uh, how we're going to do this. Okay, now that we've got the oil filter housing out, I'm going to have to apologize. This uh, banjo bolt here for the uh, feed housing, or the feed port, is a uh, 17 mil, not a 14. This blunt part here is where we're going to drill through and tap with a 1 8 NPT fitting and that's going to allow us to mount the uh, pressure sender unit directly to the oil filter housing and some might be wondering well why don't you just use a sandwich plate and the simple reason is, is see that port here well that is your post uh, filter port that is where all of this goes to this is after the filter and the best pressure sensor location is after the filter. Okay, so we got the uh, oil filter housing drilled and tapped. And then we got the pressure sensor unit here. Now his particular style of uh, pressure sensor grounds directly through the body of it. And we got some pipe tape on the end of there just in case. Um, some sensors will have a second screw and that's for a ground strap and you can always just put it on one of these bolts because the engine grounds to frame. Or neutrals or whatever. So you just screw it in. We're just going to start it there, and then there's a uh, uh, hex nut there that we use to tighten it in. And you only tighten it in about 20 to 30 foot pounds. Nothing too strenuous because you got to remember this is an aluminum body. It is cast, so it's not exactly that strong. And then uh, we'll go through the process of reinstalling it. Okay, so we are going to install new gaskets. Why? Because it's a smart thing to do. And apparently, I give Tyler luck. He does. I just found the cord in my resealed headlight. So, these are kind of a pain in the ass to install, but you need to make sure that they're installed correctly. And just so you guys are aware, they go in like that. I'm going to put it in. I'm going to torque everything down. Torque specs for that is going to be down here in the bottom. And then I'll show you guys when we're all done. So as you can see, it fits there really nice. Doesn't get in the way of anything. Um, you don't have any issues with it. And you just install it to uh, whatever sender unit you have. You use that and then you run the electrical as per your gauge. So that's basically how you guys uh, add a um, post filter pressure sender to your Genesis Coupe.